Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Phil from Zaid Comics. I'm the writer and co-creator of Magic Hop, which is in demand on Indiegogo right now, and I'm just one half of the two best-looking brothers in all of comics. And today, we are here with a good pal of mine, fellow comic creator, Michael Derrick. What's up, brother? Hey, how's it going? Uh, thank you for having me on your show. Uh, I love what you're doing with Magic Cop, and uh, you know, happy to talk thank to you, you tonight. Yeah, yeah no, man. Uh, you've been around in CG for a while. You put out the Abductables, which I always kick myself. I didn't get a chance to back that one. That one was <laughs> looked so fun. Um, I think uh, Adam F says he has an extra copy. He's going to send me, so I'm so excited oh, nice. about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that that was one of like a book that I really wanted to back, but I was just getting into um, getting magic cop colored and I didn't have the extra funds mm -hmm. um, to, to back some stuff, which is, that's how it always is now. These, you know, this yeah. past year uh, working on projects, you got to pick and choose what you want to back. Um, and yes. then some stuff falls through the cracks. Uh, so so many, abductables uh, great, is great always... projects to choose from, you know? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, abductables for everybody that uh, is watching and will watch this in the future that doesn't know. Abductables was an awesome CG book that uh, released last year that is highly uh, recommended. Everybody loved it, said it was hilarious. The art, Eby Canales did awesome art for that. Uh, and it was, it was basically like a, a badass 80s action hero gets abducted by aliens, like they abducted yeah. the wrong <laughs> guy. And like I, I told, um, buddies that aren't into comics and uh, aren't into cg about about that and they're like dude that would be an awesome movie like that's such a funny premise yeah so that was great yeah. you're, you're coming off of that run and uh that you know fulfillment last year and you're bringing it the, to the next level with some superhero action uh with grayscale yep uh which is in the description if you guys are are tuned in here you could check it out in the description below we'll take a look at it um but what i like to do on my show here kind of get my audience to know you a little bit so mm -hmm. when did you start uh writing or get in and get into comics in general uh and how how to comics uh yeah so uh you know i've kind of been into comics since i was a kid and uh you know i've always written stories since i was a kid so that's always pretty much all i wanted to do um so uh you know, I've, uh, comics for some reason, you know, obviously I like, uh, movies and TV and novels and all that good stuff, but for some reason, comics, that's always been like my go-to medium, uh, to tell stories in. I think it's just, maybe it's just how my brain works, but you know, that's always been like, uh, the, the number one avenue that I wanted to, uh, tell my stories through. So yeah, I've, I've wanted to be a comic book writer for a very long time. And, uh, you know, uh, luckily, Comicsgate kind of gave me a way into uh, not not the mainstream industry, but, you know, a way to uh, sell my books directly to uh, the audience, which is awesome. So, uh, you know, I'm very grateful for that. Um, you know, I, I did try to uh, break into the traditional industry uh, years ago and uh, not too much success. And then, uh, you know, when uh, your boy Zach kind of came along with the Diversity in Comics channel, he kind of was saying the things that I had been feeling for a while and uh, it definitely resonated with me. So, uh, you know, I was definitely uh, happy to uh, grab an oar, so to speak, and uh, get in on the action and put my book out. For sure, man. That's, that's awesome. And this, you know, network or collective of comics, whatever you want to call it, has been so great to creators like you and I putting mm -hmm. these comics out because uh, we're all in the same boat and uh, that's, what we're doing you know we have to fulfill what we're going to say we're fulfilling and you know guys like us it's you know i could tell just by talking with you it's a passion of yours you know this is what you love doing this is how you want to do it indiegogo comics gate allows us to do that and all the fans that we're building um you know and, and the people that are serious about it are gonna you know rise to the occasion push through um i think uh, a great thing that you and i are both a part of being CG Jumpstart, that is going to be another great avenue to bring uh, creators, writers, artists together. That's going to be awesome. I can't wait to see your stuff in there. It's going to be really cool. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely excited for that. You just, even just as a fan, you know, not just because you know I'm in there, but you know, uh, I think it's such a great idea, kind of a 
you yeah. know, bringing back a, a wizard style magazine to a comics and, a, you know, they're going to have so many great stuff in there. So, I, yeah, I'm very excited for CG Jumpstart. Definitely. Hey, what's up? Uh, saying hi to the chat, everybody. Uh, Brian, the Observer says, congrats on getting funded. You did get funded today, correct? Yes. Uh, thank you, Brian. And uh, yeah, we uh, we got funded today, uh, the final uh, final day of the campaign. So it was kind of a dramatic finish. Uh, yeah. we, still, we still got about eight hours left in the campaign. So, uh, you know, hopefully we can get even more backers. Uh, we will go in demand, though. So, uh, you know, I'll keep the uh, I'll keep the campaign up for uh, the duration of the production. And then as soon as uh, the book's ready to fulfill, that's probably around the time we'll close it. But uh, yeah, so uh very, very happy to be funded. Uh, it was a long, yeah. uh, long campaign. You know, a lot of promotion, a lot of, uh, a lot of lack of sleep. Uh, but you oh, know, man. definitely worth it. And uh, you know, I'm very, very happy. That doesn't stop, as you know, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's uh, take a look at Grayscale. Welcome to Glitter City. Uh, Grayscale, new superhero book, and this is something that I'm excited for because. A lot of the books in CG aren't your, you know, mask wearing superhero that we're used to seeing in the mainstream. Um, and I dig that this is coming out, you know, months ago, you were putting out images and teasers of this character. Um, and I was super interested in it. And man, this Donald DeLay piece with uh, the repo. Yeah, uh, I just think that that uh, the repo guy is a super <laughs> cool character, man. He's awesome. Yeah, he's kind of my uh, my favorite uh, villain in the, at least this first book. Uh, you know, he's uh, he's the Grim Reaper on steroids, basically, and uh, you know, oh, so man. it makes for a pretty badass visual uh, to see oh, the yeah. big hulking Grim Reaper guy uh, sure. beating the crap out of a uh, grayscale. But yeah, uh, you're right. There, there surprisingly aren't as many uh, you know straight up superhero books as you might think uh, in Comicsgate, which is great because you know. Um, I, I love the variety of different genres and, and stuff yeah. that's in comic skate. I think that's sure. great. Um, but you know, that my intention with this was to kind of make that uh kind of make an iconic character that could kind of be my calling card, like kind of like a mascot almost. So like uh, you know, uh because I feel like uh the uh the crowdfunding boom that kind of started in 2018 with comic skate, uh it really does kind of give me vibes of like the image revolution in the nineties. Uh where all these artists went independent and uh, released their own books. So that, that was kind of the impetus for, uh, for Grayscale was uh, kind of putting myself in the shoes of uh, one of the image founders and then thinking, you know, what, what would my original character be if I was, yeah. uh, you know, one of those guys? Cause you know, I'm a big, uh, I'm a big Todd McFarlane fan. Uh, Spawn is one of my favorite characters and books. And uh, so there's definitely a uh, image comics influence uh, to Grayscale, but hopefully with a, uh, you know, kind of a modern spin on things and uh you know, we'll definitely not be relying too much on nostalgia. We'll definitely, uh, hopefully, be bringing something new to the table. Yeah, definitely. Now, uh, let's hear about the story, man. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, Grayscale, he is a uh, trash talking vigilante with the power to see and manipulate karma. Um, I always thought karma would be a cool superpower for a character to have, and uh, Grayscale is the the man for the job. Uh, he does operate out of Glitter City, which is a fictional version of Las Vegas. Um, pretty much Las Vegas cranked up to 11. It's uh, home to a whole bunch of uh, crazy, outlandish, and uh, deadly villains for him to fight. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, and with his karma power, he's able to uh, see who the bad guys are and deal with them accordingly. Uh, most most often that entails him beating the crap out of them with his trusty truncheon. Um, so, you know, there's going to be a lot of cool... Uh, crazy fights with a lot of cool powers and uh, a lot of uh, awesome characters. And, uh, you know, this is just kind of uh, me going, uh, going all in with the superhero genre and uh, putting all the stuff I love in there and, uh, you know, hopefully uh, adding something new and, uh, you know, it'll be uh, 60 pages of story. Uh, we'll have, uh, you know, some extras in the back as well, but yeah, this is, uh, I'm very excited for people to read this because I'm very, uh, I'm very, uh, very proud of what we've got here. Yeah, man, you should be. It looks awesome. Um, I dig the the superhero aspect, all of everything that's going on with this. This this like poster print is so badass. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when I saw it, I was really excited. You know, I at first it was black and white, but then Eugene's mm -hmm. colors on top of them just yeah. made it explode. Mm -hmm. uh, really cool. I love how he did the buildings in the background. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. And it's he, guy. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, since, since Repo is kind of, you know, inspired by the Grim Reaper, he, he is kind of in the same boat as a grayscale where, you know, they're both kind of monochromatic. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I told uh, Eugene, the colorist, to really, uh, you know, make the background as uh, vibrant as possible to kind of uh, contrast their the, the two characters. And he uh, he knocked it out of the park. And, uh, you know, Eugene, as you know, he's a fantastic colorist, you know, I, and I did kind of uh, scout him from uh, his work on Magic Pop because it just looks so good to me. So, I, you know, that's that's kind of why I reached out to him was uh, based on his amazing colors on Magic Pop. So, dude, he is such a workhorse. Mm, and yeah. you know i because i know he's coloring grayscale um he's coloring hero blood of patriots mm-hmm. and magic Cop. um yeah. and because after we did this this uh 12 page pilot issue uh with him was the first thing we did it was kind of like the the test of uh if my brother and i could work together on a you know on a script he can go off a script and then colors also so mm-hmm. then after that, we just went right into the main story. And then he kept getting hired for other stuff, which is awesome. Yeah. And uh, the, the past, man, like two weeks, I think last last week, he turned in 18 pages. He did like 18 pages <laughs> in a week, and I'm like, oh um, which was amazing for us because we're, you know, hitting our deadline, which is great. And yeah. they, they look awesome. And, you know, I was talking to him and he's like, yeah, just the whole experience doing uh, books with, you know, you guys, um, it just makes me a better colorist, you know, experimenting on different things, which is awesome. Like you, um, you definitely got an awesome colorist for this book. And my favorite thing about him is his colors from book to book look totally different. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was definitely a kind of the deciding factor for me. Cause yeah, like, uh, you know, with Magic Pop, he definitely uh, captures that, you know, Miami uh, color palette, yeah. uh, you know, that 80s style, that uh, the pastels and stuff. And uh, you're right. He really does kind of suit his uh, colors uh, to each, the tone of each book. Right. And yeah, uh, that's y- yeah. And, you know, especially for, you know, Grayscale, which, you know, again, takes place in Glitter City, which is all about the glitz and the glamour and the lights and, you know, that yeah. stuff. He, he's, he really is the perfect man for the job because, you know, he... Uh, he definitely uh, sells the uh, the uh, the glamour of Glitter City. So yeah, mm-hmm. he's a great mm-hmm. great colorist for sure. Yeah, and another connection we have here is the logo. My uh, brother yes. actually designed the logo for you, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to uh, Brandon. He uh, he did a great job. Uh, you know, we uh, we did a lot of back and forth to uh, you know figure out because I had a general idea of how I wanted the logo to look, but you know. Uh, we definitely uh, went back and forth trying to figure out exactly how it should look with the scales and everything and with the red K. So I'm very happy with how that turned out. Yeah, I really like that it's in the speech bubble. This is kind of like a throwback to those 90 comics using their, you know, every character has their own logo using it in dialogue. Uh, I do that in one of the stories for Magic Hop as well. I just love stuff Oh, nice. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I did. I, you know, I didn't want to put too many like nods to the past, but you know, I, I couldn't help myself there. Like, I really, uh, I always love that when the hero makes their uh, epic introduction, and then, uh, yeah, their their logo is used in the word balloon. That's a, uh, you know, that's always fun. So, and you know, with such a great logo like that, I couldn't, you know, couldn't resist. Yeah, it's awesome. And this uh, poster is super. Or this cover is super cool. It reminds me kind of like a grindhouse action poster mm, uh, with the yeah. explosion in the background yeah Super yeah cool. it's uh yeah i love how that turned out yeah that's probably going to be the cover art um you know um you know it's got uh the cast of characters in the background uh split between night and day kind of representing good and evil so uh you know we definitely play with those uh visual cues of uh duality anytime we can uh to kind of reinforce the themes of the book so uh yeah very very happy with how that turned out for sure. Um, now tell me about this purple babe. <laughs> awesomely naked. Yeah, so uh, that's another one of our villain characters. Uh, her name is Phantasmagoria. Um, she, her thing is she can actually create uh, thought forms out of her psychedelic hallucinations. Um, so uh, she kind of uses that as a power to uh, blow people's minds in Glitter City and uh, wreak havoc. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that's a pretty cool power to have. And, uh, you know, we, yeah, we got... Uh, that uh, sweet pen up from uh, Pablo Romero. Uh, Beautiful. 
Yeah. <laughs> so uh, she'll she'll play a big role in the in this first book as well. So uh, you know, stay tuned to see what she's all about. It's really cool. I just the other day happened upon her name um, in other fiction, mm. and uh, it was I was watching Alice in Wonderland, and I'm like, oh, I wonder what uh, other things Lewis Carroll has written. And it's like he wrote a bunch of Alice in Wonderland stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he also wrote this poem by this by the name Phantasmagoria, which I didn't know that. And I remember like, mm-hmm. oh, that's really cool. I want to read that now because you use that as uh, her name in this, this comic. Yeah, I, I, did, I didn't know he had done that. Now I'm going to go check that out to see. Uh, maybe I could get a cool uh, quote out of that. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Like... Oh, yeah, for sure. I figured that's where you got it from because I had never oh, heard yeah. that before. I'm like, that's such a really cool name yeah um, and literally it was like two days ago and i'm like oh mm-hmm. this is perfect i could talk about this on the interview <laughs> yeah yeah i you know i uh because uh grayscale is you know he's literally his costume is in grayscale you know it, it's important to me to make the uh the villains as colorful as possible so it, it seemed only natural for uh one of the uh one of the villains to use kind of psychedelic uh imagery uh you know the colorful uh swirls and stuff that you kind of see when you're tripping out um, yeah. as a power and then uh you know just trying to figure out her name you know phantasmagoria that's just that's such a cool word uh, yeah. so <laughs> you know i just kind of went with that but no that is sweet uh you had a lot of uh really cool tiers here get drawn in the book which has already been purchased um executive producer which is awesome i love to, uh, to see that you guys did that we actually did that for our magic cop uh, mm. book and since it's like you know miami vice like a, a TV show, mm-hmm. the uh, people that backed that, we only had two of them. They get credited at the beginning because it opens up kind of like a, a TV show with credits. Mm-hmm. And then they get a special like crew members jacket that has their name on it. It's like super, like an, a 1980s windbreaker. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys have the, it's a credit in the book. Is that correct? Yeah, it uh, it came with all the uh, pretty much everything available: the comic, the ash can, uh, the proof copy. But yeah, the main the main feature for that was uh, to get their name listed in the credits page. Man, and you sold the uh, the Donald original art. That is awesome, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Um, and then the bulk order. What is this guy? Uh, so that'll be uh five copies uh for mm-hmm. uh or yeah five copies for fifty bucks shipping included. Um, wow. you know, the main, the main book by itself is $15. So you definitely get a nice discount there. If you want to yeah. have some extra copies, uh, we've already sold one of those, but that is a limited edition perk. So there's only four slots left. Um, oh, cool. so yeah, no, that's a really good deal here. Yeah. 15 bucks for a physical copy. Um, now are you going to be signing these or is that something you're, you're going to do like at conventions and stuff like that? Uh, no. So all, all physical copies will be signed by me, um, cool. you know, signed by me, bags and boarded, shipped in Gemini mailers. So, uh, yep, that's a, you know, uh, so other than the book itself, you know, I, I like to add as m- many uh, bonuses as possible. So, yeah, well, they'll all be signed and uh, all uh, backers will have their name listed on a special thanks page in the back of the book. So oh, awesome. That is great. Uh, and then this featured perk here, the art commission with the book. Tell yes. me about that. Yeah, so uh, for $50 shipping included, uh, not only will you get the uh, full 60-page uh, book, physical copy, uh, mailed to you, um, but you'll also get a digital art commission by Grayscale Artist PK. Um, so he'll draw any character of you choosing. It doesn't have to be from uh, Grayscale. It could be from any series. Um, and uh, he'll draw it fully inked with a, you know, a limited background, and you can use that however you wish. So uh, I believe we've sold three of those. So uh, yeah. we've got yeah, we've only got two slots left. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, get in on that. Uh, don't miss your chance to, uh, you know, get a, a digital commission in addition to your book. Right. That, that's great. And this, how many pages is this book? Uh, 60 pages of story. Wow. Dude, you guys, this is a great deal. Um, because you pick up the book for 15 bucks, or you could get, you know, your 60 page comic plus a, uh, a, a drawn art of any character you want that is mm-hmm. so good for 50, 50 bucks you know with other campaigns that would be you know you get two comic books mm-hmm. because uh usually people are charging 25 um mm-hmm. but you you know found a way to get it down to 15 uh yep. really great deal for all the fans out there 
Yeah, definitely. And, uh, yeah, and shipping is included with that 50, you know, it, it was, a. Uh, you know, it's oh, important wow. to me to keep the prices as low as possible, you know, yeah. to uh, get people to back. So, yeah. That is great, man. No, this uh, this campaign, I'm so glad it got it funded. Um, you know, you guys could stay in demand, which is, is going to be great as well. Uh, mm-hmm. That's the awesome thing about Indiegogo. They let us do that. Uh, yeah. So shout outs to them. And yeah, I'm excited it, it, for this, man. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's crazy how many more backers. Because, uh, you know, it, it always shows you like... Uh, how much how much you raise from the initial campaign right. but then you look at some of these uh campaigns that have been in demand for a while and uh the initial amount they raise versus what they got through in demand sometimes it's double what they originally mm-hmm. got so you oh, know that is sure. yeah i definitely and we will uh we will keep the in demand store up once, once it switches over to in demand because we still got about eight hours in the main campaign mm-hmm. um, but once we switch over to in demand we'll probably keep that open throughout the production of the book up until fulfillment so uh now for this, uh, the, the Donald pinup, is that going to be anywhere like in the book or are people going to get a print of it? How does that work? Or is um, it just so, the original art? Yeah, so uh, it, they, we do have the original art that uh, that Perk sold. It is like an actual 11 by 17 uh, physical piece of art. Yeah. Um, so we'll be mailing that out. But uh, as far as the pinup, um, for now, I think the plan is to put it in a pinup gallery in the back of the book. Awesome. Um, because, uh, as far as like extra pinups, like print pinups, uh, we're actually, uh, that Phantasmagoria piece from Pablo Romero, that's going to be one of the stretch goals for that to be included wow. in the book. Um, nice. but you know, this Donald piece, you know, uh, for now it's, it's probably just going to be, uh, in a pinup gallery in the back of the book. Cause, uh, not only do we have that, but we've got other really cool, uh, pinups from, uh, Narwhal, um, who's, uh, right. you know, from foreign agent and then, uh, Ibai Canales, who obviously, I collaborated with previously on abductables so uh no that, that's awesome man now is this uh chick is she a reoccurring character yeah so that's uh she's kind of a grayscale's love interest in the book kind of the uh mary jane watson to his peter parker uh nice. she plays a big role in the book and uh a big role in kind of what grayscale does when he's not uh you know beating up the bad guys kind of uh we get to know the man behind the mask and uh see what he's all about there so yeah she's uh She's a really cool character, and she'll play a, a crucial role in uh, events that how they play out in the book. That's great, man. Uh, and there's that beautiful pinup. <laughs> I love uh, Pablo Romero's style; very unique. Do Do you know what, um, like, how much you want to meet to to make this available? Uh, yeah. So that's uh, fifteen thousand. At fifteen thousand, right. we'll include a, a printout uh, for free for all physical backers. Being all right, in their book. So we got to get this book there. Yeah, uh, I love that. And what is uh, what's this thing? Oh, uh, yeah, so, ash can. That's right. Yeah, so we have a uh, twenty-four page ash can. Uh, this is an add-on perk that you can actually choose at checkout if you want to add it to your order. Um, oh yeah, it's I love a, that. Uh, yeah, it's an original sci-fi story written and drawn by Grayscale artist PK. Um, you know, it takes place on a Mars colony in the far future. So. Uh, you know, if you want a little more bang for your buck, if you want to have an extra comic to enjoy, uh, you can definitely add that at checkout. Um, and, you know, and uh, yeah. Sweet. Awesome, man. Uh, yeah, everybody definitely check this out. Uh, go back. it. They just got funded, so they're going to be in demand for a while and help them meet these stretch goals because it just means more content for you, the fans. Um, definitely. Yeah. And once we... Uh, once we do go into man, I'll, I'll definitely start promoting those uh, stretch goals more. We got about four planned right now, but uh, you know, I might uh, might add some more. But uh, yeah, so we got we got some cool stuff planned for uh, as far as stretch goals go. Oh, for sure, man! Awesome. Well, if you don't mind, Michael, uh, we could take a second just to talk a little bit about Magic Hop, and then we'll wrap things oh, yeah. up. Is that cool. Yeah. Awesome. Good. Sweet. So let me go all the way to the top here. So Magic Hop, uh, making huge. Uh, like progression with the the book i actually this week i want to say sunday i finished lettering the whole thing the last page was lettered um yesterday we put it all together did a first proofread and then you know put down our our uh, edits and then edited it up last night i was up until like six in the morning hmm. and then made another you know our our second uh like draft of the book and we're gonna i'm gonna proofread that one tonight 
but everything's coming together. It's going to look like this weekend we're going to be at the printers, um, get a, a first proof copy, and then we should have, you know, start bagging up books next month. Man, it's awesome. been a crazy long road and it's so much fun. I can't wait. I can't imagine the feeling of holding my own book in my hands. It's going to be so cool, man. Yeah, there's nothing like it. It's a, it's a great feeling. Not only that, but once you start seeing people actually, you know, post pictures, once they start getting their copies, it's it's incredible. Yeah. It's, uh, it makes it all worth it, you know, all the hard work. For sure, man. And uh, we do have one EJ Morges sketch card on here. Uh, EJ is the amazing artist of the upcoming uh, Cyberfrog short story. He's working with Ethan Van Skyver on it. Uh, he's the creator of Robo Toad, if you guys have seen him. But this this O'Hara sketch card, who's our um, our leprechaun giant, uh, <laughs> he, he he's my favorite character in the book. But uh, he's jacked out of his mind. He's shooting rainbows out of his hat. So this is the sketch card that's still available right now. And today on Billy Tucci's stream, he did three more sketch cards for the campaign. So those, uh, hopefully if he gets me those scans in tonight, those will be up tomorrow for purchase. So if you guys are a fan of she, uh, Billy Tucci, I mean, who isn't? That guy's a legend. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's doing three sketch cards for us. So he did Magic Cop, uh, Helly the Witch, and our, our Wolfman, Gray Wolf. So wow. check that out, guys. Uh, we're still trying to get to 8K. Um, we're pretty close, and we wanna we wanna put some uh, or not uh, some trading cards out. So we got some extra art that we wanna see if we can get uh, some higher numbers and put some trading cards out for you guys as well. Well, so. yeah, that's a that's a huge get to uh, get Billy Tucci to do the sketch card. Oh. That's awesome. Yeah, man, he he's a great guy. I met him last year at a small convention out here. And we were just talking comics gate. We were talking comics the whole weekend. Um, I helped him with his bags uh, when he packed up and he got me, uh, uh, he gave me one of those double tree cookies. He went to the front. <laughs> so <laughs> that's where he's saying. Awesome. Uh, he's, he's really cool. So we hit it off and I hit him up and he's like, yeah, man, no problem. So, so I'm super just honored to have him drawing our, our, uh, our characters. So if you guys go over to his YouTube channel, you on them today out earlier also so check out magic awesome. cop uh drop dead legs episode one and uh yeah and then also if you guys uh are into superhero comics like like michael's grayscale i'm putting out uh the next book is going to be kind of superhero based and it's called the lost pages so this is links also in the description you can sign up for the newsletter you can come to this page uh you can learn about the all the characters that are in it um, the silhouette, he's a badass, you know, vigilante who's uh, like supernatural vigilante, sees in black and white, and he's just a shadow man. Uh, so this is kind of like a uh, kind of like an exercise of comic genre. So each character mm -hmm. explores a different genre of comics. We have a supernatural character who's uh, a modern day vigilante, a sorcerer who's like uh, Merlin's apprentice who lives throughout time is in different time frames. So he's a pirate in the 1600s in this one. We have our like nineties bombastic high T toxic masculinity monster <laughs> Lobo character. His name is Crimstone. And then we have like a, a pulp character named the masquerade. Who's like our uh, take on the shadow or the spider, or the phantom stuff like that. That's so awesome. some great artists working on this. So check that out as well. Sign up for the newsletter. You'll learn a lot about the comic if you come to this uh, this launching page. But yeah, that's it from me, um, Michael. Thanks for coming on. Uh, oh, I think he accidentally uh, booted himself, <laughs> but he'll be back. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you uh, for having me. Uh, you know, Magic Cop looks awesome, and uh, oh, My there he is. Yep. <laughs> I swear, I'm like a uh, bad luck. That's like the fourth time that's happened on a stream where someone accidentally boots themselves. So <laughs> I don't know. I control W'd. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> um, let's see here. I'll, I'll screen share again. Yeah. Anything else? Last last thing you want to say, brother? Uh, yeah. So uh, thanks thanks again for having me on your show. Um, and uh, you know, Magic Cop looks great, and uh, you know, I that that new book looks great as well. Very cool. Thanks, um, man. I'm excited.
Yeah, and uh, you know, like I said, we got about uh, I guess uh, less, probably about eight hours left in the uh, main campaign for Grayscale. But uh, you know, we definitely uh, definitely could use a lot more backers. You know, we we did reach our goal, but uh, you know, now it's time to hopefully start unlocking some of those uh, sweet stretch pools. So uh, of course, man, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so uh, you know, definitely uh, let's keep the uh, train rolling on Grayscale, and uh, you know, let's uh, you know get this uh, get this book made because. Uh, I'm very excited to tell this uh, awesome superhero story. Yeah, bringing back superheroes to uh, these, you know, comics gate, brother. This is going to be awesome. Um, yeah, yeah to t- uh, where can people find you on Twitter or anywhere else? Yeah, so uh, if you have any questions about the campaign, uh, you could comment on the Indiegogo itself, or you can hit me up directly on Twitter at Cauldron Comics. Um, you know, I'm on there pretty often, and, uh, you know, I love uh, talking to people on there. So, yeah, uh, if you have any questions or uh, concerns, please do hit me up and uh, love to talk to you. So, yeah. Sweet. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. If you guys haven't liked and subscribed, please do so below. That really helps us out. Also hit that bell for notifications because we do these interviews uh, quite often, usually once a week. And if you do so, then you'll know when we're going live. Um, Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Please check out these campaigns, and we will see you next time with uh, more videos.